Hi everyone, this is a sample video for assignment 2 comp 115. It puts together everything that you've learned so far and you'll be learning up to week 9. That includes variables, operators, conditions, loops, functions and compound data. In the basic version of the program, a grid is displayed on the screen which has the same number of rows and columns. In this case, 10. So you need to divide the entire display window into 10 equal parts in x and y direction and thereby create rows and columns. That value can of course change, so you can also be required to change it to 12 or 15 or 50 etc. In the basic version of the program, wherever you click, a point is generated. This point is called a node and all the nodes are connected to each other which is called an edge. So you have all these nodes and the nodes are connected to each other and that's your basic graph. You need to perform two more actions for credit level mark. The first is that when you click the mouse, the node should not be generated at the exact location where the mouse is pressed, but the nearest grid point. So if I click the mouse over here, the node generated would be at this grid point. So let's try this. And you can see it's generated there. Similarly, if I click the mouse here, the gen node generated is to the point which is to the immediate top right of it, to the bottom right, and to the bottom left. Which means that we are guaranteed that these nodes are generated only at grid points. The second part of a credit level mark is by pressing the up and down and left and right keys, the entire graph moves in the relevant direction. So if I press the down key, it goes down by one row. If I press the right key, it goes to the right by one column. If I press the up key, it goes up by one row. And by pressing the left key, it goes to the left by one column. For a distinction level mark, each node that you generate should be highlighted with a red or blue color if it's, the, it's got the lowest cumulative distance as computed against the other nodes or the highest cumulative distance as compared to the other nodes. So that was a convoluted sentence. Let me explain it one more time with the use of an example. Let's say I create a node another node, a third one, a fourth one, a fifth, sixth, and seventh. So you can see that this node over here is in red color, while this node at the top left side is in blue color. That's because the sum of distance of this node from every other node. So let's call this distance D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, and D6. So we call that the cumulative distance. So the node that has the least cumulative distance should be painted red. The node that has the highest cumulative distance should be painted blue. So this is sort of like saying what's an outlier versus what's the center of your graph. And that's your distinction level component. For the high distinction level mark, you should be able to pick up a node using mouse pressed, drag it across, and then drop it at another point using mouse released. So if that's my first node, my second node, my third node, fourth, 
fifth and sixth. Then I realized that this graph is not really symmetric as I wanted and I would like to drag this node and put it to the top. I can drag it and you can see that as the node comes closer to the center it changes to red from the other nodes. So I move this node over here. Similarly, this is the node I want to put it up so I can move it to the top. So this means that I can edit my graph as necessary and adjust it. And that's your high distinction mark. In addition to what's required up to the high distinction mark, you can do a couple more things to make the program a bit more interesting for you. And these are A. Whenever a graph is enclosed or the shape is enclosed, it should be filled with light blue colors. So you can see if it's a square, it's filled with light blue colors. But if I create a node over here, you can see that some of the edges intersect and this is the condition for when the shape should not be filled with any color but if I drag it to the left you can see the shape is colored once again so you should be able to color an enclosed shape or I should say a fully enclosed shape another thing that you should be able to do is by double clicking on a node click one and click two that node gets deleted from the graph I create another node, I move it over here, another node, move it over here, and a final node which I would like to move over here, let's say. So I create a graph and let's say I don't need this node anymore, so I can click once and twice and that node gets deleted from the graph. Again, one and two, gone. So these are some of the things that you can do for uh, yourself. Another thing that I've implemented that uh, you can do is by pressing the enter key a new graph is generated. Then I can press the enter key again and a new graph is generated. I can press enter key again and a new graph is generated. So those are some of the things that you can do as challenging exercises just for your own satisfaction. These three things, namely of filling the shape with a color if there are no intersection points, double clicking on a node to delete it, and creating multiple shapes by separated by an enter key. These are the things that are not assessed in assignment two. So that's it from me. All the very best for your assignment. Make sure you study well. And if you need any guidance, post it on general discussion forum and we'll try to help you to the best of our ability. Thank you very much.